Hello, friends. Welcome back to Science Telly. Today, we're diving into a list of 23 funny, mind-bending questions that not only challenge our brains, but have even managed to leave science scratching its head. Some of these questions might make you laugh, some might make you wonder, and a few could just blow your mind. So, let's jump right in. Question 1. Can plants feel pain? All right, let's dive into this fascinating question. Can plants feel pain? Plants, unlike us, don't have a nervous system, brain, or nerves, which means they don't experience pain in the same way we do. Pain, as humans feel it, is a response from our brain, triggered by nerves that tell us something is wrong, like when we touch something hot or get a cut. Plants lack this setup. However, scientists have discovered that plants do react when they're damaged. For instance, when a plant like a tomato or tobacco plant is injured, say, if it's bitten by an insect or a leaf, is cut, it releases certain chemicals. These chemicals can act like stress signals, essentially telling other parts of the plant or even nearby plants that they're under threat. So, while plants don't feel pain the way humans or animals do, they have their own unique way of responding to harm, which helps them survive and adapt to their environment. In that sense, they're more aware of damage than we might think, even if it's not quite the same as feeling pain. Question two, can we imagine a new color? All right, let's tackle this mind-bending question. Can we imagine a brand new color? Our eyes and brains are set up to see colors within a specific range known as the visible spectrum. This includes colors like red, blue, and green, which combine to create all the shades we can see. Because of this, we can't really invent a new color outside this range. Our eyes just aren't built to see it. However, scientists have come up with what they call impossible colors, like a mix of red and green or yellow and blue. Normally, our brains would never let us see these colors blended, but with special visual tricks, we can briefly experience them. Even so, actually imagining a completely new color that isn't part of the visible spectrum is nearly impossible for our brains. It's like trying to picture a color you've never seen. Our minds just aren't wired for it. Question three, what makes something funny? Let's dig into this curious question. What makes something funny? Laughter is something people experience all over the world, but what we find funny can be very different from one person to the next. Scientists believe that humor often comes from something surprising or unexpected, like a twist or punchline we didn't see coming. This surprise factor activates areas in our brain linked to reward and pleasure, giving us that happy laughing feeling. But here's the interesting part. Everyone's sense of humor is different. What makes one person burst out laughing might not even make another person smile. This just goes to show that humor is incredibly personal. No two people find the exact same things funny. Question four, do animals like being pets? Here's an interesting question to consider. Do animals actually enjoy being pets? For animals like dogs and cats, which have been domesticated for thousands of years, there's evidence they do bond with humans and enjoy our companionship. Studies show that dogs, for instance, can form attachments to their owners that are similar to the bonds between parents and children. Cats, although a bit more independent, also show affection and recognize their humans as part of their family. But when it comes to exotic pets, like reptiles or wild animals, we can't really be certain if they like being pets. These animals don't have the same history of domestication and may simply be adapting to their environment to survive. So while some pets clearly enjoy being with us, others might just be getting by. Question five, if aliens exist, what would they look like? Let's dive into an out of this world question. If aliens exist, what might they look like? With billions of planets out there, many scientists think there's a chance life could exist elsewhere in the universe. Some believe that alien life might be very simple, tiny microbes or bacteria, for example. Others think that if there are complex alien beings, they could look extremely different from anything on Earth. Their appearance would likely be shaped by the unique conditions of their home planets, gravity, atmosphere, temperature, and available resources. So, could they look like us? It's possible, but unlikely. More likely, they might be completely unrecognizable, with forms adapted to environments we can barely imagine. Question 6. Can animals understand English? Let's explore this intriguing question. 
can animals understand English? If you've ever talked to your pet, you might have felt like they understood you. While animals don't grasp language the same way humans do, some can learn to recognize certain words. For instance, dogs can learn hundreds of words, often linking them with specific commands or objects, like knowing that sit means to sit down. Parrots can even mimic human speech, repeating phrases they've heard. However, they don't fully understand these words as we do. They're more repeating sounds they've associated with certain situations or responses. In general, animals seem to understand us more through association and tone than through true language. So while they may not know English, they definitely pick up on familiar words, sounds, and cues. Question seven, are you in a VR simulation? Here's a mind-bending question. How do you know you're not living in a virtual reality simulation? This idea, known as the simulation hypothesis, has fascinated scientists and philosophers alike. As technology advances, it's becoming easier to imagine a future where virtual simulations are so realistic that they're indistinguishable from real life. In theory, if a civilization became advanced enough, they could create simulations that are as real to their inhabitants as our world feels to us. Right now though, there's no solid evidence that we're in a simulation. We don't have any glitches or clues that confirm it. It's one of those questions that keeps people guessing because if we were in a perfect simulation, we might never be able to tell. Question eight, can computers experience consciousness? Let's take on this futuristic question. Can computers ever experience consciousness? Artificial intelligence has come a long way and computers can now perform incredibly complex tasks. But consciousness, the sense of having a subjective experience or awareness is a different concept altogether. Consciousness isn't just about processing information, it's about feeling or being aware in a way that humans and animals experience. Scientists and philosophers are divided on whether a machine could ever achieve true consciousness. Some believe that with the right programming, computers might one day become self-aware. Others argue that consciousness might be something unique to living beings, a quality that machines could never truly replicate. For now, AI may be smart, but it's not conscious. The question remains open as we continue to explore the mysteries of both the mind and technology. Question nine. Are you dreaming right now? How do you know? Here's a question that really makes you wonder. Are you dreaming right now? And how can you tell? Dreams can feel incredibly real while you're in them, but they often lack some sensory details we experience in waking life, like distinct smells or tastes. Scientists suggest looking for reality markers to check if you're dreaming. Things like clocks or mirrors, which often appear distorted or behave strangely in dreams. One easy test is to pinch yourself or try something similar. If you feel the pinch, you're probably awake, but even that's not foolproof. So, are you still here? Then it's probably not a dream, or is it? Question 10, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Let's tackle the classic question. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Science has a pretty good answer for this one. According to evolutionary biology, the egg likely came first. Before chickens existed, their evolutionary ancestors were laying eggs. Over time, genetic mutations and adaptations led to the development of what we now recognize as a chicken. So this age-old question isn't just philosophical, it ties back to the principles of evolution, making it a fascinating intersection of science and thought. In short, if we follow the evolutionary trail, the egg came before the chicken. Question 11, if time travel is possible, would we have met time travelers already? Let's dive into a fun and thought-provoking question. If time travel is possible, why haven't we met any time travelers yet? There are several theories that try to explain this intriguing mystery. One possibility is that time travel might only allow trips to the future, meaning there wouldn't be any travelers from the past visiting us. Another theory suggests that if time travelers do exist, they might be intentionally avoiding us to prevent altering our timeline or causing paradoxes. Additionally, if time travel were possible, there might be strict rules governing how travelers can interact with people in the past. It's also possible that time travelers are among us, but are blending in so well that we don't even realize it. So while the idea of meeting a time traveler is exciting, the lack of evidence could be due to any number of fascinating explanations. Question 12, are animals conscious? How about insects? Plants. 
Let's explore a thought-provoking question. Are animals conscious? What about insects or even plants? When we talk about consciousness, most people think of animals like dogs, cats, or primates, which show clear signs of self-awareness and social behavior. Many studies suggest that these animals possess some level of consciousness, able to experience feelings and emotions. Insects, however, present a more complex case. While they demonstrate behaviors that suggest awareness, like problem solving or communication, it's still unclear if they have consciousness in the same way mammals do. Their brains are very different and researchers are still debating the extent of their awareness. Surprisingly, some research indicates that plants can sense their environment and respond to stimuli like light and touch. However, calling this consciousness is a bit of a stretch since plants lack a nervous system and the ability to experience feelings. Overall, the question of consciousness spans a wide range of life forms, showing that the complexity of life on Earth is greater than we often realize. Question 13. Red paper under blue light appears black. Is the paper still red? Let's explore an intriguing question about perception. If red paper appears black under blue light, is it still red? This question highlights the fascinating relationship between color and light. The color we perceive depends heavily on the light conditions. Red paper reflects red wavelengths of light, so in normal lighting we see it as red. However, when illuminated by blue light, the red wavelengths are absorbed instead of reflected, causing our eyes to perceive the paper as black. Even though the paper's physical properties haven't changed, it's still made of the same red material, our perception shifts dramatically based on the lighting conditions. This illustrates a key principle in color theory. What we see can differ from reality based on the environment. So, while the paper is still red in its nature, it appears black under blue light, showing us that our perception of reality can be influenced by the context in which we observe it. Question 14. Why do humans find things funny? Let's delve into the question. Why do humans find things funny? Humor is a fascinating and complex aspect of human experience. Science suggests that many things we find funny stem from elements like surprise, incongruity, and relief. When we encounter something unexpected, a punchline or a clever twist, it can catch us off guard and trigger laughter. This laughter is more than just a reaction. It releases feel-good chemicals in our brains, such as dopamine, which enhances our mood and helps us bond with others. However, humor is highly subjective meaning that what one person finds hilarious, another might find dull or unamusing. This variance can be influenced by personal experiences, cultural background, and individual personality traits, making humor a deeply personal and unique aspect of human interaction. So, while we can understand some of the science behind why we laugh, the mystery of why certain jokes resonate with some people and not others keeps humor as diverse and interesting as we are. Question 15. Do aliens like being kept as pets? Let's think about this fun yet thought-provoking question. If we had aliens as pets, would they enjoy it? This idea may sound like something straight out of science fiction, but it opens up important discussions about ethics and the treatment of sentient beings. If aliens exist and possess intelligence, emotions, or social structures, it raises complex questions about whether it would be right to keep them as pets. Just like with animals on Earth, their enjoyment of being kept as pets would depend on their individual needs and preferences. They might have emotional and social requirements that we can't fully comprehend, making it challenging to meet their needs as we do with our pets today. So, while it's a fun scenario to imagine, the reality would likely be much more complex than simply having an alien pet. It invites us to think critically about our responsibilities toward any sentient being, whether human, animal, or hypothetical extraterrestrial. Question 16. Why do humans wear clothes but other species don't? Let's explore an interesting question. Why do humans wear clothes while other species don't? From an evolutionary perspective, clothing likely began as a means of protection from environmental elements, such as cold, heat, or injury. Early humans created garments to help them survive in various climates and conditions. Over time, clothing evolved into a cultural norm that serves many purposes beyond mere protection. Unlike humans, animals have natural adaptations that allow them to thrive without clothing. 
fur, scales, feathers, and skin provide them with the necessary protection from the environment, temperature regulation, and camouflage. For humans, clothing has also become a significant form of self-expression and creativity. It allows us to showcase our individuality, cultural identity, and social status, making fashion an essential aspect of our lives. So while other species rely on their natural adaptations, clothing for humans represents both a practical necessity and a unique way to express who we are. Question 17. Do animals feel love? Let's explore a heartfelt question. Do animals feel love? Research suggests that many animals, including dogs, elephants, and dolphins, exhibit behaviors indicating they can form strong social bonds with others. For instance, dogs are known for their loyalty and attachment to their owners, while elephants display deep emotional connections with their family members, often mourning their losses. While animal love might not be identical to human emotions, since our feelings are shaped by complex social and cultural factors, it's evident that many animals can form connections resembling our concept of affection. These bonds may manifest through behaviors such as nurturing, play, and protective actions. Overall, while we may not fully understand the depths of animal emotions, the evidence points to the idea that many species experience love and attachment in their unique ways, enriching their social lives just as it does for us. Question 18. Are you lucky? Does luck exist? Let's contemplate this thought-provoking question. Are you lucky and does luck even exist? Luck often feels like a tangible force in our lives, but some scientists suggest that what we perceive as luck is more about randomness and coincidence. Humans have a natural tendency to seek patterns and make connections, which can lead us to believe in luck when it might just be chance at play. However, there's also evidence that positive thinking and a proactive attitude can influence outcomes. People who adopt an optimistic mindset may be more open to opportunities and more resilient in the face of challenges, which can create the impression of being lucky. So while luck as a mystical force might be up for debate, it's clear that our attitudes and behaviors can play a significant role in shaping our experiences. In a way, we might have the power to make our own luck through how we approach life. Question 19. What makes a good friend? Let's delve into the question. What makes a good friend? Friendship is a universal experience, and several key qualities contribute to what makes a good friend. Science suggests that trust, empathy, and shared experiences are fundamental elements. A good friend is someone you can rely on and confide in, who understands your feelings and supports you through ups and downs. Research has shown that friendships play a crucial role in our mental well-being. Friends provide emotional support, help reduce stress, and even enhance our happiness. Additionally, strong social connections have been linked to a longer lifespan, showing that those bonds can have profound effects on our health. So, the next time you spend time with your best friend, remember that this cherished relationship is not only enjoyable, but also contributes positively to your overall well-being. Question 21. If you were born with a different name, would you have a different personality? Let's explore this intriguing question. If you were born with a different name, would you have a different personality? Research suggests that names can have a significant impact on how others perceive us and how we perceive ourselves. A name carries cultural, social, and even psychological connotations, which can shape experiences and interactions throughout life. For example, studies have shown that people may form judgments about someone's personality, abilities, or social status based on their name. Some experts argue that a name might influence career choices or personality traits, creating a subtle yet real effect on an individual's life path. This phenomenon, often referred to as nominative determinism, posits that people may gravitate towards professions or behaviors that align with their names. So, while a name is just a word, it could hold more significance than we realize, potentially affecting how we see ourselves and how the world sees us. This raises fascinating questions about identity and the complex interplay between names and personality. Question 22. Why do clowns seem scary or funny? Let's dive into the question. Why do clowns seem scary or funny? Clowns evoke a wide range of reactions, and this duality can be traced back to their exaggerated features and unpredictable behavior. 
Psychologists suggest that the bright colors, oversized shoes, and exaggerated facial expressions can create a sense of unease for some people, making clowns appear creepy or unsettling. This is often tied to the concept of the uncanny, where something familiar is made strange, leading to discomfort. On the other hand, many people view clowns as symbols of fun and laughter, often associated with joy and entertainment, especially in circuses or children's parties. For them, clowns represent a playful, whimsical aspect of life. This contrast in perceptions has fascinated researchers, highlighting how a single symbol can provoke completely opposite reactions. Clowns serve as a compelling example of how our emotional responses can be influenced by context, personal experiences, and cultural associations, making them a rich subject for psychological study. Question 23. Can you know what it's like to be a bat? Let's delve into the thought-provoking question. Can you know what it's like to be a bat? This question stems from philosopher Thomas Nagel's famous essay where he argues that despite our ability to empathize and imagine the experiences of others, we can never truly understand what it's like to be a bat. Bats perceive the world primarily through echolocation, using sound waves to navigate and understand their environment, a sensory experience that is completely alien to human perception. Our empathy and imagination have limits, as they are rooted in our own sensory experiences and cognitive frameworks. While we can learn about bats and their behaviors, the subjective experience of being a bat, how they perceive space, movement, and their surroundings, remains inaccessible to us. This question raises fascinating issues about the limits of perspective and empathy. It reminds us that while we can strive to understand other beings, there are aspects of their existence that may forever remain beyond our grasp. It's a compelling exploration of consciousness and the nature of experience. Question 24. If a deaf person burps in the woods and no one hears it, did it make a sound? Let's unpack the intriguing question. If a deaf person burps in the woods and no one hears it, did it make a sound? This question echoes the classic philosophical dilemma of whether a tree falling in a forest makes a sound if no one is around to hear it. At its core, this question explores the nature of perception and reality. From a scientific standpoint, sound is produced by vibrations that travel through the air, creating pressure waves. So yes, a burp, regardless of who hears it, does generate sound waves as a physical phenomenon. However, the philosophical angle raises the question of whether sound exists in a meaningful way without an observer to perceive it. This brings us into the realm of subjective experience. If there is no conscious being to hear and interpret the sound, can we truly say it has the same significance? This puzzle intrigues both philosophers and physicists, highlighting the complex relationship between observation, reality, and meaning in our understanding of the world. It invites us to reflect on how much of our experience is shaped by perception and whether things hold value independent of our awareness of them. Well, we've just taken a journey through some of the funniest and most thought-provoking questions that science is still trying to answer. Which one did you find the most mind-bending? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Until next time, stay curious and keep questioning the world around you.